Hello and welcome to a special in studio edition of the Sean Sense with Dave Marquez. How you doing, man? Pretty good. Pretty good. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. Oh, thanks for having me. So we have the big Transfers Marvel show next Sunday. How are you looking forward to that, man? I'm always looking forward to it, you know. It's always nice for the people to come out to support what we're doing. Oh, yeah. I love the change from Good Enough Studios to the Business Expo right last month for Record Humble. Mm -hmm. How was that? Did you meet your expectations? Oh, yeah. No, we had a great crowd. It showed up, uh, and uh, it was a paid admission. Yeah, it was good. Better. Um, but uh, the studios, uh, the, the Glendale Studios, is a great place, and uh, uh, we hope to be back there soon. They're, uh, they're shooting on the stage that we're on right now. Oh, they're shooting on that. So I've heard rumors of that. Yeah, so there's. Uh, there's Stage has been occupied, so we couldn't be there. So we figured we'd take the summer off yeah. uh, from the studio and kind of visit Southern California and see what happens. So, yeah, uh, yeah, six month deal with Commerce Casino? Well, we have a six show deal. Six show deal. Okay. Six show deal. Six show deal. Um, uh, actually, I might be, that might be wrong. Uh, we, we have a multi show deal. Okay. Uh, I don't know how many dates exactly, uh, but we have a multi show deal with them uh, over the next six months. That's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, it should be cool. In fact, right after I leave here, I'm going there for an MMA show called Bama USA. That's pretty cool. So, to see how the room works. What else do you do for KDOC ever in Hollywood? Because I see on your on your Facebook uh -huh. and Twitter, you do a lot of other stuff. Yeah, uh, I'm a producer and director of television. That's pretty cool. So, uh, wrestling has always been a part of what I've done <laughs> for the last 25 years, oh, and uh, television professionally for uh, 23 years. So. I uh, produce and direct uh, lots of stuff, and uh, whether it's on air promos or contests, vignettes, or long form programming. Um, and we have that New Year's program that uh, aired. That's right. The we came up with New Year's program. We had a lot of, uh, lot of talk, people talking. Yeah, next day. A lot of people talked about that. I don't know. <laughs> was it good or bad? I watched one of my friends. It was something behold. We were like, is this planned or what? What happened there uh, after New Year's? Uh, for New Year's Eve? Yeah, what happened? The biggest thing that happened was we lost communication <laughs> in the stage. Damn. That's the biggest thing that happened. I know K-Rock the next day, they played everything, like a whole minute. Yeah, not just K-Rock, Howard Stern, CNN. Yeah, yeah uh, everybody played it. Uh, all the network newscast had <laughs> footage. But more people were talking about that than the upper. You know, it, <coughs> yes, a lot of people spun that in a positive direction, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Uh, uh, people were not talking about the first New Year's Eve without Dick Clark. They certainly yeah. were talking about Hollywood Boulevard and Jamie Kennedy. <laughs> and that was all me, too. So <laughs> I was picking Jamie Kennedy's house. Was that more of a Sue Stone's idea or what? Because he no, was actually, with him. No, it was actually my idea. I love mm -hmm. Jamie Kennedy. I've watched his stuff, his show on, on WB, when it was WB. Mm -hmm. And it will be now with Swan. I'm a big fan of Jamie Kennedy, but he seemed a little off that night. <laughs> Uh, it's not that he was off. It, it was um, he lost communications. It's a thing called the, the thing in your ears oh, called the right. IFB. Okay. Yeah. And so we lost communications. And if you go back and watch whatever might still be floating around, you'll notice why we lost it. It was hanging off his chest. It was oh, just hanging there, yeah. and he didn't put it in his ear. What the fuck? <laughs> what about Adam Pierce getting the fight at the end with the with the band? Like Something you need to talk to Adam about. <laughs> That's crazy. Like what is the band? Pierce. It was, it was, it was some was, fan. It yeah. Was, it was a uh, Pierce is not a guy to mess with. No. <laughs> That at all. So you've been around wrestling for how long now? 25 years. And what wrestlers have you worked with over the years? <laughs> uh, like, what are the guys uh, people know? Honestly, everyone from... In your mind? You could, yes. <laughs> but even you can go back further to Bruno San Martino. Damn. To, uh, uh, Harley Race was one of my first business partners. Oh, that's in interesting. World uh, Legion Wrestling in Missouri. He still has it. It's called World League Wrestling now. It's the same company. Yeah, a great wrestler, Shane Harley Race. Every time I watch a, you watch a Ring of Honor show, you say trained by Harley Race, so he's, his list is really impressive. Yeah, it was Harley Race and Gordon Soley and I yeah. who ran the company together, and we were out of Springfield, Missouri. And, uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. You said Vicious to when I was uh, freelancing at WCW or consulting for the WWE That's right. uh, or Vice President of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Oh yeah, you had a lot of those New Japan Dojo shows back in the early 2000s? Yeah. Pretty, how are those experiences New Japan in Japan? Because I know it's really big, really good. Their live music is really good lately. Uh, new Japan? Yeah, how was it working on New Japan? Uh, well, it was a different New Japan then. Oh, then what is I, now? Was, I, was, I was working directly for the Inoki family. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, it was an experience, a learning experience. Uh, I learned an awful lot. Um, and... Uh, I kind of, I believe, 
a lot of people might fault me for it too. Uh, but uh, I I opened the door and allowed uh, just about anybody in because yeah. I have a a really good yeah I got a good bone in my body so yeah. I, I like to help people and if uh, if you could help somebody then I always I always like I always have to help people that's what I do so you say I trust too many people and that's that, that I'll be in this business because the wrestling business is kind of people take that shortcut sometimes. Yeah, but you know, uh, I guess in life everybody. Yeah, gets good, and so. being a booker and promoter, you kind of get heat from people because you don't get Vince Russo and all those people. I've been. What are you, the booker and promoter for all of them? I'm an owner. The owner of all that's pretty good. But you gone through Joey, the Joey Ryan as a booker and Adam Pierce and Cole Cabana as a booker. Uh, Cole Cabana. Oh, was he's. Never a booker. I know someone said someone said Al Cole Cabana. I don't know why. Uh, Cole Cabana was never a booker. Uh, so how was there was there was there between Adam Pierce and Joey Ryan as a Adam Pierce is very story driven. Yeah. Um, Adam is uh, is really deliberate um, in in his storytelling. Yeah. Um, and I'm the same way. Yeah. Uh, Adam and I have worked with each other probably week in and week out. Um, about maybe oh two, oh okay. three, uh, and I've known him from the Midwest. Yeah. That's where uh, I so I knew him when he had hair. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, knew of him when he had here. Yeah. Uh, uh, Joey, uh, uh, Joey's not really, with my experiences with Joey, uh, he he's really good for the instant gratification. Yeah, the punch that's yeah, just right there. Yeah, he's part of that new quintessential pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. He's helped get in the town, and it was great for a show they had. Really cool. They about bad influence sitting the Young Bucks, Michael Elgin. So he's doing pretty good over there. And yeah. what Tina uses them, uh, and what I've seen over there with uh, him working for you guys, and mm -hmm. EWG, and that mm -hmm. basically. Uh, David Lagana was a great yeah, uh, writing, writing yeah. partner uh, to write with. Uh, and uh, now, uh, the uh, writing team, if you want to call it that, yeah. is, uh, or the producing team, mm -hmm. is uh, Joe Franciosi, who oh. with the WWE okay. uh, for a little while. Uh, Angela Trinidad. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, went from ring announcer to pencil. Okay, that's where he's going because we now we have Joseph Duncan as the ring announcer. Right, that's pretty why good. Angela's not ring announcing. You see him running around in a tie-in <laughs> headset now. <laughs> pretty good. Uh, I saw him get super kicked in the face by the young bucks at All Star Weekend Nine earlier. Yeah, he still ring announces. Yeah, he still, still does. He, does. he still does stuff. And he still gets super kicked in the face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was pretty shocked because I didn't know Angelo could take bumps and he got hit right in the face. <laughs> Angela's a strong guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, Mike Coughlin, yes. uh, we know him as Mike Mongoose, oh, he yeah. came from Ring of Honor and Killer Kowalski from Boston, mm -hmm. and I've known Mike for a very long time, he's a part of our producing team, um, and then uh, uh, Johnny Ian is also a part of that team. You have great storytelling in Hollywood, I love going to tape ends and you see the good stories, but when you battle tape ends you don't see like the, the promos during the show, so you like, there's a match, you don't know how it got set up, it's kind of weird, it's not to watch the TV, I, I go to tape ends, but I don't really watch the TV, kind of watch watch a lot of indie wrestlings. What, indie, what wrestling do you watch when you have time? I don't watch any. Any? At and, all? and if I do watch wrestling, it probably predates 1990. <laughs> Damn. So how do you, who, who scouts talent for Hollywood? Well, I do. You do? I mean, I, I, I have my finger on it. I know what's going oh, on. Okay. Um, I just don't watch it. And the, the reason I don't watch it is because I don't want to be influenced by other people's stories yeah. or, or having to, um, uh, live by a certain uh, character that someone may be doing somewhere yeah. else. Uh, I, I think I've been really successful at, at creating emotion and, uh, and teaming and pairing people together and doing really good matchmaking um, in what we've done, whether it be uh, New Japan or uh, NWA Pro Wrestling or, uh, or you know, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. How was the process of leaving anyway to go into being your own company with Champions from Hollywood? Well, it's really, uh, it's really confusing and uh, a real long story. There's no nickel tour around this. Yeah, it's a short story. Um, <laughs> that's, I, I, there is no short <laughs> okay. story. Uh, yeah. I first joined the NWA in 1995 or 1996 in uh, Missouri. Mm -hmm. World Legion Wrestling was a member because Gordon Soley wanted us to uh, be a part of something 
Yeah. Uh, and we're sitting as we were in Missouri, and Harley was a part of it, uh, and he was a part of it. It just made sense. Howard Brody at the time was the president. Um, Bill Barron was the vice president, and Bob Trollich, of course, was uh, the legal counsel. Um, and I met wonderful people in the NWA, yeah. beautiful people. Ed Schumann, who's now passed, yeah. uh, he was a promoter in Chicago, and my fellow board member. Uh, we had a lot of trouble together. Um, and uh, more recently, uh, people with different agendas joined the organization. Yeah. And uh, we couldn't, the, the, I guess the nickel tour, the bottom line is we could not continue as a group yeah. to fight a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And we had already put tens of thousands of dollars into it multiple times over. And so, myself as an individual, I guess I had to look at it and say, what is it really worth? Mm -hmm. uh, they have a lot of new rules, too. I don't, know, I, don't know, I don't know about rules. Yeah. Um, uh, there was a lot of funny business going yeah. on behind the scenes. And in the truest definition of politicking, yeah. uh, not phony locker room politicking you yeah. might hear about. This, yeah. is, this is real truthful courtroom politics. You know, this was real. So uh, I just realized, I came to the conclusion that it just, the NWA name, I had already invested so much in it, I felt I needed to fight for it. Uh, and then in reality, uh, nobody cared. Mm -hmm. And what I learned, and what I mean by that is, it's not that people didn't care about what we had done, they cared what we had done, whether it was uh, Adam Pierce or Colt Cabana with the title uh, yes, or anything. Or anything. Yeah. Yes, I have a little hate. Seven or 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 great series last year. And to them. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, I just realized that those three letters were me. Yeah. So whether I had them attached to me or not didn't matter. Because when people look at me and what I do, it's always going to kind of harken back to the end of the yeah. because I was a part of it for so long. Now we have the new chapter, Champs from Wrestling From, which we have Texas, and we have in Arizona, and we have Texas, and we have Harlan. Yeah. That's all you. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So again, more Texas, Texas is a slow start. Uh, we're working on a lot of things in Texas. Um, Phoenix is, is going to be really good. And the tribe out from that, I guess? Uh, it's not the tribe, it's, it's, uh, it's Brian Bennett. Oh, Brian Bennett. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're, uh, tribe or something. we're yeah. working really hard on making Phoenix our next uh, spot. Okay. Uh, working on a broadcast channel there. Okay. And um, hopefully their program will be just like ours in Hollywood, just with different guys. What are your favorite storylines you've books over the years? Yeah. Wow, there's so many. <laughs> uh, there are so many. I mean, Willie Mack and, and Scorpio oh, Sky yeah, from the TV title. The rivalry was really good. Um, Austin Aries and Scorpio Sky was a great series we had from our uh, little theater in Hollywood, <laughs> the Showcase yeah. Theater. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, the Rock Ness and the Cutler Brothers. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. that was fun. Yeah, was uh, it, it really does go on and on and on. Yeah. I mean, uh, creating Peter Avalon. Oh yeah, yeah. He's really a good way. Creating Peter Avalon and actually taking and molding a young person and getting them to understand uh, the storytelling process and the character building process that it will take time. And here we are, three years later. He's a real character now. He's a real personality. I've heard one of the best tag teams here in SoCal, yeah. Bumpy Ren. Yeah, no. beating the Young Bucks and have really got on to do well. That part of the weekly showcase, the early showcase. What, what part of you do you have with the showcase for Thursday night at Sunday? Ah, uh, not much. That's all. Destiny, that's, that's all chaos. All chaos. Yeah, I, all I'm there every Thursday, and we miss three shows. So pretty good. And so what are your plans for attacking division? Because we've had the Tribe Banditos battle for the past few years, so what's your plan for that? We're going to continue having fun. <laughs> yeah. That's what's going to happen. We're going to have a cage match with oh, yes, that's John, that's gonna be the really Rock Nest Monsters and P.P. Ray on the 9th at the Commerce Casino. It's going to be fun. And then we had some fan questions. And someone said, sure. well, what about when's women's wrestling coming back to uh, NWA? You know, I need not treasure the highlight uh, Probably never. Probably never, yeah. Uh, well, girl kid. wrestling on our level doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why we know it doesn't work is because we get Nielsen ratings. <laughs> yeah. And so we can see where the interest lies and with whom. Uh, 
and girl wrestling didn't work. Nothing against the girls, but mm -hmm. uh, it just didn't work for our program. So I doubt uh, that's going to happen. Um, I would love to bring the amazing Kong back in. Oh, yeah. uh, I would love to maybe bring Japanese talent or uh, a special attraction. Uh, I think that's all that will really work when it, when yeah, it comes to... Especially I've had my fan questions, which I had a lot of them, but they were trying to get some things. Like what, somebody will say, what's your favorite cigar? Did you smoke cigars? My favorite cigar? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <sighs> I have a few. I'm a fan of double Maduros, they're called. So whether it's a punch or a, a Padron or a, this new uh, brand that I forget its name. Um, it's called the G Series, but I forget the uh, uh, Olivia, o Oliva. O L I V I A, I believe. Oh, yeah, we got some more questions. That was a oh. good question. <laughs> how, how do we get a job with CDFH? Mike, 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 Mike from uh, Silicon Central now. Uh, how do you get a job with us? Right. Well, there is one employee of Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, and that's me. <laughs> uh, the rest are all independent contractors. Yeah. So, you, if, if you have something to offer, you know, you can always bring it to the table and see what happens. Yeah. Um, what we're really looking for, to be honest with you, we're looking for promoters. Oh. Um, you don't have to be in the wrestling business to be a promoter. Yeah. Most people think of a promoter coming up with what's happening and all yeah. that. A promoter and a business person, you know, they need to get a building yeah. and promote the show. Don't worry about the creative, and yeah. that's where I believe a lot of people uh, mess up and, and really is a downfall to what they're trying to do um, because there's no camaraderie in working with each other. Yeah, we've had a lot of new promotions come up over the past couple of years here in SoCal. People, mm -hmm. some of them, like Dungeon Chips Wrestling's got, come and gone, a lot of stuff has happened. So, wh what's your take on SoCal Wrestling right now? Uh, it, it is the. I've traveled the world with pro wrestling. Yeah. It is the oddest. Location. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been uh, in this business for a year now, and I've seen some maps, some stuff that's weird. Well, not just matches. Matches. It's, it's just, it's just the the mentality of talent in this area at times uh, puzzles me, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes good, sometimes not. Um, versus the Midwest or the East Coast or the South, uh, wrestling is taken a little bit different here. And I hope that the talents who've been involved with me, and they've all evolved too, if you've yeah. noticed. Uh, I, I hope that's because they have been a part of what I've done, and oh. they're a little different than uh, some of the other talent that might be. Yeah. Well, what do you say about the Midwest stuff? Like wrestling cares, with it, like is a show that was booked, and we would be was so great in Philly and New York, but here it didn't really go over. Uh, well, you have to remember, you're in a real metro area yeah. in Los Angeles, in Southern California. Yeah. Uh, I say this all the time because it's true. The biggest competition that any promoter, I believe, has in any type of entertainment mm -hmm. is the weather. Okay. So you have really nice weather year-round here. Yeah, so that's, that's you might be an exception if I ask <laughs> this question, but would you rather go to wrestling? Or would you rather go, as a family, would you rather go to the beach? Or would you rather go to the mountains? Or yeah. would you rather go on a trip? Because it's nice and yeah. it's a day off. Or would you rather go to wrestling? And that's and that's tough, uh, especially when most people sit in their cars uh, half of their life, you know, and there's not much time to spend with their family. So that's a different perspective. That is very interesting. Yeah, a lot of people don't think about it that way. That's I, really interesting. Uh, I've been trying to explain it that way for a long time. Versus sense. the East Coast, everything is really close. The yeah. states are smaller. The Philly's close to New York and New Jersey and South Wales. And yeah, and so you could really drive to a different state in a yeah. matter of an hour to an hour and a half. And the mentality there is different. Yeah. So here, uh, wrestling is not taken as, I don't want to say serious, but... Uh, it, I'm at two to four shows a week, and, I, and the crowds are going to differ, but mm -hmm. one thing that gets a lot of people is Lucha Libre really gets, you can book that easily, and it draw gets fans. It does draw big fans because of the area. Yeah, and, we're and in LA, it's we're a near a large Hispanic, Hispanic market. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I go out of place, but my guys sometimes be in the Lucha shows. Mm -hmm. well, and Lucha booking is crazy, because I've been at shows where I can't understand a word they're saying. They're doing chair shots and blood, and I don't know what the hell's going on. Two out of three falls and stuff. 
yeah, you don't need to sit on travel. I'm like, the state's like, NorCal, SoCal, how long does that drive? And I'm like, yes. Yeah, like, eight to s- ten hours. So, like, Vendetta Pro and APW, they're great companies, but I can't go there. It's like eight hours. My sister drives me everywhere, so it's hard to see all the town. But I'm Jeff Dino and SoCal Pro, mm-hmm. who you've worked with, and he says that, I always get down and see me, and I'm like, dude, it's like, a, 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 from Belfort, California to San Diego, it's hard to get down there. It's not San Diego, it's an ocean side. Ocean side, okay, San Diego. Uh, and that's not that far. But that's not that far. My sister. But that's, but see, that's the thing there, too. <laughs> that's the mentality of Southern, in Southern California. <laughs> yeah. If you had to drive, if you drove, yeah, whatever, uh, yeah. If, if you had to drive from Los Angeles to Orange County yeah. and not go to Disneyland, that's yeah. not your destination, you're not going to do it because it's too far. Yeah. But if you're in the Midwest or the yeah. East or the South, you'll drive forever to go somewhere. Yeah. It's, it's a whole culture thing. Yeah. Now, one, 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 one. The biggest company here is Progressive Gorilla, which over ten years. Well, I, I disagree with that. Disagree. Oh, yeah. I, I know. I'm on television. I, oh, you're on television, but we're we're all the television wise. Let's, let's do this. What, what do we do? This? Pro Wrestling Gorilla is by no, no. By How many people go to that show a month? Three, three fifty. One night on television, I do tens of thousands of viewers. Okay. So. They're one, and I'm not taking anything away from them. Okay. This is just something that everyone needs to realize. No. In one night, let's just say, if we fill the Staples Center, yeah. that's how many people are watching our program okay. times. That's, that's, yeah. you have to remember, our TV goes to a potential, just in Los Angeles, yeah. 5.3 million viewers. Yeah. So people want and to be we're drawing a one or a two rating, maybe even a three at times. That's time. pretty good for TV because that's... Is Big Luna, the, uh, the owner of that did a, did a thing, like a video saying that, well, that he went to a pitch con, which was like a couple weeks ago, and he, he talked a lot, a lot of uh, pitch people about, about wrestling. He said wrestling isn't, isn't needed on TV now. That were TV that can't, that's not well, needed. Well, he's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> because here's, here's the reason why. Why? I know that I can sell a 30 second commercial for two or to $400. Oh, okay. yeah. When's the last time you've heard someone being able to sell anything on the internet? Mm. How many people do you know that's made made money on the internet? Not many, yeah. That's right. I don't make Broad- any money. Broadcasting's not going anywhere. Yeah. That's why it's millions and millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. That's it's a um it's a generational thing. Like I grew up with television yeah. as being the main focus and radio, and newspapers. That's why Vic says he's focusing more on the internet and do it as I hear well, he can. He can. Definitely. He totally can. His new his new X event is too insane for television. Well, that's different. That's <laughs> pretty true, you know. yeah. But well, the, people, like talk, so people he talked to mm-hmm. said that the movie network TV is looking for wrestling. Well, network re- network <laughs> television has always hated wrestling. Yeah, it's always. It's always been if you because one person that the one people that produced the Lucha Libre on MTV too, that which is the negative mm-hmm. people said that this man owns all the talent, so why would we want you? Well, that's <laughs> yes and no. Yeah, um, uh, but, but like like with us. Yeah. Uh, we're on Math TV. Yeah, which is and it's, it's awesome, a, awesome news, it's, man. It's it's a fun little channel, mm-hmm. but we say little channel, but it goes out to sixty million homes. Yeah. Now, sixty million people are not watching yeah. this, but a large, a large audience is. It's like shows like legit, legit. You look at the ratings. My friend, look at the ratings. It's starting to get renewed, but it was like a zero point nine. It got renewed because zero point nine is a great. Rating. Yeah, for it, it was on like a, it's on at like eleven o'clock on Thursday. So it's doing pretty good. Well, just like us, we're on at one o'clock in the morning. And for you to do real. with not much promotion yeah. on the air, and we're drawing a one or a two. And I love your show. Shows are great. You have some of the best matches. I've seen Sky versus Pierce basketball well, a couple of months ago. It was really good. It's a great team matches. Mm-hmm. But some people are saying, I thought people were like, you think the charging for uh, mission now is going to draw away some of the fans that came for free? No, I don't know. Uh, well, you were at the red carpet, right? Yes, I was, and I'm, I'm at all the service show. I, I love wrestling. But I mean, did you see the crowd? Yeah, yeah. it was a great crowd. It was one of the larger crowds in the area. You so you think you're, you're, you're going to grow? Uh, I, don't, I don't know, yeah. but I mean, one of the things with people who complain about ticket prices, and that's another thing about Southern California, yeah. is that we gave a show away for free for yeah. three years. Yeah. You know, and the moment we ask for something yeah. back, we've given people lots of entertainment. Yeah. This is a business. I don't mind so we, paying the money, but well, this, this, this is my you. audience that well, I want to. I want to get you, questions but, to be, but, have you here. I'm not hot at you. I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying in general yeah. that people need to understand. Yeah. 
even if we asked for fifteen dollars mm -hmm. for one show, that ain't bad. Well, that's dollars. what maybe fifteen cents a show that you've gone to previously. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't we don't push merchandise down everybody's throat. We don't. Um, I don't charge for the show on the internet. We give everything away because I feel that at the time, as we were building and ramping up for the first three years, yeah. that. Uh, we had to prove to people who we are, and they had to find us. And if you if you go out to shoot and ask for money, well, mm -hmm. they're not going to give you a chance. Yeah. So tape tapings are free for like all the most of the tapings for shows. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you know now since we're going to kind of do a summer road show, if you want to call it that. Again. Um, first the Expo Center, now uh, Commerce. Commerce. Casino. And who knows where it'll be in July? That's um, uh, we might go back to Commerce. I don't know, um, but uh, you know, asking for a little bit back, you know, I, I, would, I would hope that that'd be a little bit of gratitude from our audience, yeah. and they get to see it for free on television. Yeah, you know, but but you know as well as anybody else, it's a yeah. whole different feeling than being there live. Yeah, live is I love wrestling more live than on on the on television. Television, yeah. This is, this is longer than most interviews go. So sometimes like we're not material, but it's good in studio. I like it in studio because. You can talk more, you can open up more and relax than being out on the road where I'm at, at shows that's having five minutes or like John Morrison said two minutes and only here. And, and the audio is perfect because people can play with the audio at different shows because I'm low budget. I have my, my Samsung Galaxy Note, which is right here, which I film with this. And if I got the best audio, the microphone is probably not very small. But thank you for being on in studio and stuff. Yeah. And I like being, we still have time stuff for more questions. The same uh, sometimes. People I know, I'm only, only 58 years in, I'm very new to this business, I don't like even doing it for longer than me. So let's see, what about breakout stars from the Chisholm of Harlem? We have tons of breakout stars. What do you uh, think should be the next breakout star that we don't know? We don't see any. We know Tyler Sintron broke out. Yeah, Tyler Sintron. Uh, Sean Ricker. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, because no one would have ever... I, honestly, for the record... Uh, I never thought Mikey O'Shea was going to be the big talent that he is. I know he was just in the back for happening, then all of a sudden he just jumped out and became really good. Yeah, we, we gave him a shot. Yeah, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't know. It just it takes time to evolve, and you have to massage things and and play with things and uh, see what works and see what doesn't. Um, so breakout stars in the future, I don't know because I can't tell what the future is going to bring. So what about Sean Ricker and the WWE rumors? Do you have anything to say about that? No, nothing to say. About I know that he'll be at Commerce Casino on the okay, night. Okay, yeah. <laughs> he also just won the FSW Heavyweight Title in mm -hmm. Vegas. So what about uh, Brian Cage? Any news on him? Brian? Brian? Yeah. I know. Why you have news on him? No, just I've heard he's not. He's want to come back to Hollywood or whatever. He, he left WWE because he dropped the title for injury. He doesn't have what? Not, no, he just he left WWE because he just didn't like whatever happened. M W. M M W. Ma'am. Man, oh, Beats Company. Yeah, Beats Company. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And but did you say he didn't like our show? I'm saying about Hollywood. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Because the way younger. I don't know why he's not in WWE because he's really good talent. I don't know why he's not in WWE or TNA. WWE let him go. Because he was in FCW for a while. Because he hasn't been in the last show. I was wondering what the future was up in the right Oh, it does. Yeah. Right. I, I I hope Ryan will be back and we can call him and say, hey, show up. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's what we'll see. What well, unique matches that you're bringing back? Anything new matches you can see soon? Well, uh, I I think the most unique thing about our show is that we present pro wrestling matches. Yeah. You know, you can tell who's good and you can tell who's bad and yeah. there's always a winner and it's kind of an old way of thinking. You know, on our program we try not to uh, overdo it and since there's no pay-per-view or there's no uh, big show per se, yeah. uh, there's nothing that is making us wrap things up quick when it comes to the stories and the characters. We do have every promotion running out of views. Again, everybody in the rubber tries to get an eye view out right away. I don't know anything about eye view. You don't know anything about eye no. at all? No. If I'm going to do something like that, I'd much rather yeah. go get a satellite truck and <laughs> send it across the country. Yeah, because we have a ball running right now for eye view to running this Saturday and this Sunday with Brian Cage. Well, obviously it's working for them, <laughs> but they wouldn't do it again and again. Yeah, they do. Well, there's a lot of people doing the Ring of Honor's done it. But then it comes with troubles because you get. Sometimes the internet connection is not good in the places you do it at. So, 
what can we expect for what we're not just for matter competition again now, right? Well the big matches are uh Ray Rosas and Peter Avalon and Rock Ness in a cage. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have match. a strap match okay. with the Banditos, our tag champions. Going up against the tribe, the former champion. That's pretty good. Um, we have Tyler Cintron and Willie Mack for the television title in a two out of three falls grudge match. That's pretty good. And then a confrontation between the experience and Sean Ricker. That's pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. So I'll be at Commerce Casino. How much for tickets now? Uh, tickets are 15 like they always are. $15. Uh, since the public asked, <laughs> I didn't come up with this. You guys asked for this. Yeah. They wanted a ringside seat. Yeah, so, right. you know, we came up with the ringside seat for $25, um, and uh, people started complaining. <laughs> Don't buy the ringside seat, buy the $15 uh, seat. The poster said 35 then 45 Yeah, no, that, that poster was incorrect. <laughs> incorrect. That's why it's not up right now. Nice poster, really cool poster. Who made Thank the poster? Uh, Gabe Ramirez. Cool. Gabe Ramirez up north uh, with uh, uh, Revolution Pro Wrestling. Oh yeah, Red Pro, which now is a TV show on the internet, it's pretty cool. It's not just the internet, it's on the Fox. Oh program. yeah, it's on, on the those Fox up there. Man. Which is associated with KDOC, it's the same order. Are you, so, anything you got a plug for upcoming stuff for you? Uh, no, just watch Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, uh, Saturday nights at 1 a.m. It's weird to say Saturday when it's really Sunday, but <laughs> yeah, my it's Saturday says, night at one. I said, "Chairs Wrestling Parlor is full of lies. They're filmed in Hollywood. And it's not one. It's not in Saturday nights." Well, CSI <laughs> isn't filmed in New York. Either. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, all the CSI are canceled, but CSI <laughs> only thinking about the CSI regular. And Arnold Schwarzenegger really isn't killing people in movies. Yeah, so <laughs> like this, so yeah. <laughs> he just killed the state. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah. So if you watch our program. Uh, I do thank you for supporting us over the years and everything I've done. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, just come on out if you can to Commerce Casino right in the middle of Orange County in Los Angeles off the 5 Freeway. Uh, and we, I don't know when you're going to put this up. But yeah, this tonight? Oh, yeah, tonight? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So here's another thing we just announced. Mm -hmm. Over the weekend, starting tonight at about 8 o'clock, probably yeah. when this is going on uh, Pacific time, mm -hmm. every $1, every ticket sold, one dollar of it's going to go into a pot up to 150 tickets. Yeah. So that means when you come to the show, you'll be a winner no matter what. Someone will walk away with at least $150 in cash, and we're in a casino, so maybe they'll triple it when they go downstairs and play a hand oh, yeah. or something. I forgot one fair question. Someone, someone What's asked that? me a couple times, what are, when will the Scorpio Sky students from the Santino show be on the show? Can you say that again? The Scorpio Sky train students at the dojo, yeah. when will they be on the show? That's what on there. our show? Yeah. Well, we have two of them on there now. Oh, good. Uh, Ian, Ian Wives me. and uh, Daniel Joseph. That's pretty good. Some random we Facebook person in my Yeah, show. we have two guys on the, on so the show. So there you go, Renee. I remember your question. So that's, and also, what scotch goes with pizza? So that's what asked me. Scotch goes with pizza? That's what someone said. What's you know, scotch? I don't think any <laughs> scotch goes with pizza. Um, <laughs> J. Cal, uh, uh, SoCal Sunset. Oh, J. S. He told me that. He saw us. Well, he knows I drink scotch. Yeah, so what's your favorite um, scotch for now? Yeah. Uh, Let's go any, on. Let's any, go around stuff. Cause any, the, any scotch that has one piece of ice in it. <laughs> I don't redeem myself. Because I thought I wasn't doing good on the show, but I don't redeem myself being a random question with Dave Marquez. So, what's your favorite TV show, man? Random question, Ridgey. Random question here. Get nobody, What's my get favorite nobody TV show? Um, yeah. At the moment? Yeah, any time. No, at the, what, at what, the what, moment, what? Mad Men. That's awesome. Sure. I heard the season this hasn't been that good this year. The season is awesome. You just got to watch it a little closer. Okay. What what two animals would you book in a fight in the ring? If you could, what, if you could what, book, what, what? Animals. If you could book animals? animals? Yeah. Like a bear or a shark or what animals? You know, I had a match <laughs> in... Uh, Atlanta once, where Joey Ryan was going to wrestle a bear. Joey Ryan was going to wrestle a bear. Joey Ryan was going to wrestle a bear at the uh, at the Phillips Arena in, in Atlanta, Atlanta. Yeah. about I don't know four or five years ago. But th there was a movie that was being shot, and the day before we were going to announce it, this bear killed its trainer. Well, that ain't good. And then there was all these uh, uh, pet activist groups uh, well, on top of it. And uh, which they probably have real reason to be on it. People should be fighting bears. But the uh, the management at the Phillips Arena told me I couldn't do the match, and I think Joey was really relieved. But uh, I don't know. I wouldn't put any animals against each other to be honest with you. <laughs> well, that dance. Well, who's the most charismatic wrestler you've worked with? Who's the funniest? Like funniest guy backstage? You get the guy you want to take on a road trip with you. Always the guy you want to be with. Uh, boy, that's so hard. <laughs> 
Uh, that's why they're asking if you like pizza or ice cream. <laughs> yeah, um, just name some, just name one guy. Just I mean, there's tons of the great Ace Steel. Okay. is hilarious. Um, oh, there's it's such a list. Um, so many people make me laugh. Okay. Uh, sometimes unintentionally, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, I don't know. There's 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 a whole list, but I will say a steel okay. is hilarious. What's the worst match you've seen live? We don't want to bury uh, that. No, there's many I've seen okay, live. What's the I, I don't know the names of the people who okay, were in them, but this, 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 give me like a story. Yeah, oh, quick story. I, I once saw a blind albino midget. <laughs> what? <laughs> I should have called him. A <laughs> Shorter guy. Things get said uh, here that I don't know. <laughs> face, a fully guy my size, bigger, uh, yeah. in a match where it was like a video game where you didn't know how to use the controller and yeah. you were doing these phantom drop kicks and missing and and of course the blind guy won. Purple <laughs> uh, Devitt and uh, Carl Anderson was at. They were at that well, show. Devitt, yeah. It's interesting. And, uh, I think Shane's photos, the photographer, was at that show too. Uh, it wasn't here; it was in another state. Yeah. What's <laughs> like the worst place you ever had a show at? What, what place was this? When you went there, like, what the hell is this place? They didn't scout it. They came there, like, this shit. I've been lucky enough to run in decent spots. Yeah. Um, there was a place in Mexico. There was a lot of places in Mexico. Uh, we mm -hmm. were in a. Uh, what I found out was a cockfighting arena. Cockfighting arena. Uh, but it was a big place. A lot of, and we put a lot of people in there. It was a Kevin Kleinrock production. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually the predecessor to this Kickstarter campaign okay. he has right now called Viva La Lucha. Oh, yeah, Viva La Lucha. Uh, and uh, that place was a dump. Um, and he actually put this online the other day somewhere about that I produced a direct in, in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, six cameras, I think we had. And I was calling all six cameras, and uh, but right <laughs> right next to me, you know, where they built a table, yeah. I just kept smelling this odor, yeah. and it was full of dead chickens. Oh my lord! From the cockfights. Yeah. Yeah, that was a dump. Okay. Well, you ever think of making compilation DVDs for a holiday? No. Not, never. Never. What's your what, what what's your thing behind compilation? Uh, it's very hard, but it's a shit load of them out for no reason, like anybody. Like, Coca, they put one out for Coca Banner, and Coca Banner came on Twitter and said, I don't, you don't support this. They fired me because funny doesn't equal money. So, why would they put something out even when they didn't like me at all? Um, <coughs> well, that's not the reason why I. I know, know, yeah, I know. Um, what do you think about them? I, I don't know, I look at things differently. Okay. And my business uh, sense tells me not to do it. Okay. Who are some of your favorite people to work with? This like this is random off your top of your head. Some of your favorite people to work favorite with. Favorite people to work with? Yeah. Oh, I mean, the majority of the people who are on our program right now, right. I love working with every one of those guys. Um, uh, I love working with Shane's photos, the photographer, mm -hmm. Shane Kidder, great friend and uh, fantastic photographer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not putting anyone in any particular order. Yeah, I know that's what I, I, mean, I love working with Kamala. Kamala is a great person. Yeah. Uh, he has no legs now, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, I loved working with uh, Percy Pringle. Yeah. I loved it. Um, I mean, the list can go on and on. There's people on the East Coast, names that I can bring up that probably no one would recognize. In the Midwest, uh, Trevor Murdoch is a great friend Oh, yeah, Trevor Murdoch. Yeah, great friend of mine. Murdoch. Um, uh, John Cohn, a WWE referee, is a great friend of mine. Um, you know, John Cena, when I worked with him here in California, he was a great guy. Samoa Joe is... Uh, actually, Samoa Joe, when you ask who's one of the funniest people, <laughs> Samoa Joe is. That's uh, pretty interesting. I, I like to say that uh, Samoa Joe is the Dean Martin of wrestling. That's He's great. just a great guy to be around, and it's always a good time. Uh, Brian Danielson's oh, funny yeah. as hell. Yeah, he talks about uh, bears, and I love watching him on TV. He's probably one on the road my favorite with, person to watch on TV. Yeah, being on the road with him is is great. But I have a lot of favorite people, uh, and it's all genuine, and they know it. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, at times I'm a misunderstood person yeah. because uh, a lot of people didn't come up the same way I did. 
and I think they see what I'm doing mm -hmm. is wrong because in the last 15 years that's not how you're supposed to do it. Yeah. But you've always told me you talk too fast and you shouldn't be doing this, you need mics, you need this. Well I just like what I'm doing I'm going to keep doing it. This show might not come out great but it's what I wanted to do. And this is random on edited on Sister. You can't control what happens on live TV. I don't edit. I put this up and boom. It's like on Sister. It isn't edited. It isn't edited at all. Nothing edited at all. And it's, I have no script. This is all in my head. Oh, I know. All the notes. So there, see? Try to put boom. 58 interviews, 59 now down. I just decided to put random stuff because I try to do different things in my interviews that make people keep watching and stuff. That's pretty good. What's one of your favorite Disney movies since you're a big Disney guy? Uh, well, I'm a big Walt Disney Walt guy. Disney guy. Well, big Walt difference. Disney. Walt Disney guy. Big okay. difference there. Big difference. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of them. Um, and for different reasons. <clears throat> I originally wanted to be an animator. I was fun. No, I agree. I don't think a lot of people know that. I yeah. draw. Um, yeah. And uh, what got me was uh, Pinocchio and Fantasia. Oh, yeah. Pinocchio is a great movie. Uh, when, I don't know, do you know what a multiplane is? No. Well, there's a shot in animation that creates death. Oh. And there's a, there's a sequence when Pinocchio is being sent to school that I just remember vividly that there's doves flying by and they're going through Geppetto's village and there's so many characters in this sh scene, in the shot, mm -hmm. and they're all doing something individual. Oh, Everything true. from kids rolling a hula hoop down the street to... Uh, I want to say a butcher wow. doing something and th I think that one of the biggest things was as it's pushing in going to uh, Geppetto's door yeah. is there's a, a mother and a little boy I think where he's getting ready to run off to school and she pulls him back I think by the suspenders yeah. and, and wipes his nose and then sticks the handkerchief in his back pocket. Um, and seeing that as a kid uh, really grabbed me and, and the emotion that was put into that and then when I got older I realized that those were drawings. Yeah. You know. And uh the computer back then was all drawn. No, not in nineteen forty. Oh yeah. No, yeah, no. Uh actually the late thirties. Yeah. Uh but uh, uh Pinocchio uh, from an animated standpoint. And live action, I like all uh, live action Walt Disney movies. Oh, yeah. Uh everything from the monkey's uncle to uh um uh, the, the one and only original family band to oh. uh Parent Trap. Yeah, to uh, the original Parent Trap. Oh yeah, I got uh, one. To yeah. Treasure Island, to Song of the South, uh, you name it. Uh, I'm probably a fan of it for one reason or another. Right. So thank you for being on, man. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So make sure. See you the ninth Sunday, the ninth. Yes. See, so make sure you like this video and peace, people.